Hello guys, welcome, welcome. Hannah here again, and we are back to Duncan Ropa, Krieger Avok. And this time we are going for the class trial. So, just a recap. What I believe it's that she hero is not a girl, it's a boy. So when he went to um, the um, yeah to, to make exercise on the gym, he was going for the boys' room. So that that was when um, genocide Jack killed. Hero, but in other hand, um, someone died and was not triggered. It means someone swept the he book somehow from the ones uh, probably someone dead because there were two girls dead, so yeah, and that's it. That's my expectations. Let's see if that's true or not. And sorry again for the no war this episode. Is everyone ready to what? Mm -hmm. Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Because not here. Huh? And Toko is really don't remember. Up, could I forget that little nut job? Show part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? Okie dokie, I'll go ahead and drag her out here, kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. Sad. It's not a. Did he appear dragging Toko behind him? I, I told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would dra drag a girl around. Terrible! You are terrible! So now everyone's here, right? Okay. The elevator, let's get this show on the road! I'll see you guys down there! Let's go! So, shall we get going? It's time to find out to kill Chihiro. Chihiro. Shiro Fujizaki. So gentle, so meek. Nobody Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. I like. Whatever. And that murder is one of us. Someone standing right here. <laughs> I gave you plenty to work with. Show us how far you, your logic can take you. Oh man. Come Fucking Toko, man. What's got her so worked up? Come on, let's just go. We have no choice, right? We have to do it's this. True. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked towards the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to raise faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions, couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sunk with heavy clanking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. As, and as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until, finally, it came to a sudden stop. What do you think? I really like it. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? <laughs> Star time is stupid questions. Let's get it. Good, good. You're rip, rip, raring to go. Good. Hey, I don't guess. I don't. Not at all. Well. Hey then, let's get this show on the road. Kills, kills, kills. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fight, a deadly class trial. Yes, sure, let's go. 
I'll rise and shine. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon! First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head injury. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, it wasn't an iron pipe. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. It was some kind of a hammer or whatever. The weapon had to be at the scene of crime. There was something with bloodstain on it. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. Maybe you have some idea, but I don't understand that at all. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? You think you have some proof that contradicts what I said? Ah, uh, no, I don't want to contra... Whatever. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I don't want to contradict, I want... Whatever. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, I need to go along with the pipe part or whatever. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, it's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although... I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. He's focusing too much on the geno genocide, Jack. I don't... What? I don't... Real? I don't mean it's not, but... Chihiro's killer is... The fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Absolutely. For in this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there is a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white uh, noise. Yeah, whatever. Let's go. Make your argument. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it. 
There is proof. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Ooh, lust. Blood, blood lust. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every genocide check case, which the world at large doesn't know, if I'm not mistaken, has to do with the position of the body. Where the murder took place, how the victim was positioned. Apparently, in every genocide jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. Yeah, it's a crucifix position. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Yep. What? That's correct. Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! It's true. What? It's true. Okay, wait, oh, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gonna be so complicated? Everyone know this one. Or most of them. It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also not to be Toko. The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple per people, right? Yep, that's true. She has a devil personality. It's something like... Huh? Not a B. No, it's not a, T a Z in it. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Yep, huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko could have split personality has to do with her behavior. I got uh, her behavior changed. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Whoa, is that a dead body? Yeah, are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and back, a top inning, and a bottom. A sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my 
tongue without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out, I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Yep. Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. <laughs> How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> This is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise! How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried! I swear I tried to control it, but, but... But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't mean... Yep, just show her some blood or whatever. After she finds, she will return as Genocide Jack. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thug heckled across the cart room, but in the next second... Yep. Wow, hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> so you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? <laughs> what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. Or what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. And every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> this is the murderous fiend genocide, Jack. This is... this is... this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. 
What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! And it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! <laughs> and another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about genocide death. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth! Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah! I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Maybe. She's totally right about that, but, but something still bothers me. What she said, I need to get some more details about all of this. say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. Okay, I have to focus on remembering Shiro's body, that must have the answer. That should prove that what he said isn't quite right. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No, it's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Well, let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There is one clear difference between the murderers. In the photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and stomach. Here all you see a clear difference. The style of blood message, the victim's fatal injury. A gun! For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That 
That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce. Can you stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was Someone it? just took advantage of Genocide Jack to blame her. That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide cases, all other victims were stabbed through their hands with the scissors. But this one, it was suspended. Was used to suspend her. I got it. Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous genocide jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Or the scissors. <clears throat> Specifically, pairs of razor sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. Around my old pattern. Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Yeah, the world miles. Because she was a friend. I got it! Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They were males. They were all... Yep. Guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction! Since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lolly car! Lowly, curse. I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong! You can't can you gutter dogs, all of you! Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot! <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway! <laughs> 
Everybody has no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain... But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. One person who could have copied the genocide jack cases. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you've already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened. <laughs> Are you saying Mr. Togami well, did it? Well, he claims to be super, super intelligent. Well, he wasn't the only one. Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because yep. he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. They are suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Won't you agree? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girl's locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. There was a clear contradiction in what the Akuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. Next, we are going to add something called a true a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. Okay, whatever, let's go, go, go! But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the mini, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. No, that's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go What's ahead, with show us. What's with attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit. The differences mean. between this case and other genocide Jack murderers 
The evidence that proves Piacuya is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. The proof that Byakuya did it is hidden within the rope. I guess it's possible, but first, the item she had been pound, bound. It was used like rope. Was it actually a rope? Just like rope. Was it actually a rope? No, it wasn't. Yakuya didn't use rope. He used a very specific object. What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I've never seen that rope before. No, it's wrong! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see... That rope? Or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yaku, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned, as if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Shiro's body was finally found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I just accept what Byakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. I got the scene of the crime. You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a <laughs> true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is a question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else. 
then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya would have been so confident, confident about it till now. Maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys and girls' locker room. There were two things that were switched. Yeah. No, first I have to prove the scenes were switched. Ah, it means the calendar or the photograph or the poster. Yeah. I got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. Not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device, but Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way yes, to get into the has. boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way! And I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is it really possible? Could Chikiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have packed her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. That's a possibility. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, it's wrong. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. 
Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked us, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? Uh, she was a boy. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote no, for Biakia. she was a boy all along. And uh, a e-book permitted her to go to the boys' locker room. Is that it then? Shiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Biakia is the one who did it? No. Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, <laughs> right then. I declare an official class trial recess. <gasps> For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead, and where she took us was... The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it Be again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait! <laughs> she got to see her! <laughs> Probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's, it's not a not girl, it's a boy! It's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. But it's not a girl, so it's a boy. Just leave this to me. Sakura, what is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not I knew about. it all along. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... Yep. What? This is... It... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring lightly. <laughs> and she used lifeless form. Her mercy frame trembled. This, this girl is... A man. Is what? Is a boy. I knew it. Fuck yeah. I see. So 
she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Then, it's really true? Jihiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Jihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? Oh, they were really on fire! I wish I had killed him! So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Oh yeah, I knew it all along. Ahem. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. I knew it because Shihiro is certainly not a girl's name. I mean, I'm not a Japanese native person, but I don't recall seeing anything on anime or anything or mangas or whatever. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a, a boy. boy. Let's pick up from there. Oh yeah. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed and my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. That's why he, he rejected um, all the purposes of uh, training with the other, gir other girls in the girls' locker room. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> Very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... how can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord. Knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. 
Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well, then. I'm with you, too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? But if Piaquia didn't do it, do it, if it was a real killer, then why does she hear? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means the killer is a girl. No, that can't be. The murder scene was the boy's locker room. Hmm. Shoot! I don't have it. Okay, let's see. Uh, the killer is a guy. Since the crime scene was the boy's locker room, you will need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer will have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But it's still not enough. I need to find more clues. But he used then a girl's keyboard to go through the girl's locker room to switch Isn't the Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. And it's not like they're just gonna turn themselves in. Game over, man. Game over. Yeah! No, as a matter of fact, there is an eyewitness account regarding Shihiro. She has more information about that. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Shoot! No, it's not Sakura. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing. Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. Shoot! Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah, all we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer! And only the killer! Milk and Swan! I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. 
The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Yep, that's true. Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously? Who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Why? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket we took. Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow it's really hard to believe. I'm going to be honest, right now I'm kind of lost. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next we have to ask... And he's going to... at night. Why did he choose the specific so anyone tracksuit could... that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? Uh, guess... I got it! Or no, it's it. Because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I... I don't even have a tracksuit. Cause exercising sucks! I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? He's right. What he said was not true. Really know First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, 
The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! I... I don't even have a tracksuit. This exercising sucks! I have a white tracksuit, personally. Shoot! First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask... Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit? No, it's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I saw him stuffing in a jack, jacking in the bag. And then I assumed he had it off his writers. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... you just... Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracks? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Uh, are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No. That can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket into my bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. And when Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. <laughs> It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew he did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turning point that ticked me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's Chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as Dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really... Kill Chihiro? I, 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 I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. 
It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Kifuni, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. I found it on the ground, right? And it must belong to Shihiro, right? Oh my god! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. The murderer switched the D-Box from Rio. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> I think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere. How yep. precisely did the handbooks get broken? I hit the news. I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. Yep. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but 
Who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> Here's my answer. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, no, wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... but I found something that proves it beyond the shadow of a doubt. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just... No, it's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall, isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong.
Here's exactly what happened. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that the Akuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? that Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial. If I can somehow show where Mondo is in the right now. Once I do that, everything will be clear. Uh, be clear. Show me some evidence! You're wrong! Some evidence. This should prove it. Break. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll. You don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. Bro? Bro! What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! 
Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the Blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What? Uh-uh. This time looks like you got it right again. Yes, it's, it is so. The blackened that killed Shihiro Furizaki was... Mondo Wada. Unbelievable. In, in case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kyotoka shows the wrong answer. You're treating very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I refuse to believe it. There's no way, no way. It could kill someone. Sorry. What? What is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? Why, 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 why? Why? Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Rondo's taking a vow of silence. So, explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of the murder this time is a sad story of two men. <gasps> oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the shift key to fast forward in text. Anyway. There was once a young boy, and his name was Shihiro Furizaki. He had an extreme inferiority of complex regarding his own lack of strength. He heard things like that as long as he could remember. Overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bring himself for the info. That fragile form of a young girl to that is all out. Um. No, nobody will be able to say anything about even though you were a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself in that shell, uh, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him. It's not so easy. Not. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. It actually disappeared. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. <laughs> I am... <laughs> I am weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had two choices, but to accept this fact, after all, this world is survival of the fittest. Uh, if you're not strong, you are able to survive. And then the lovely and hateful monoclon announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, included Shiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to develop. Even though he dressed like a girl, Shiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something Shiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The ardent shell would crack. The armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being trapped into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't really want to talk about it right now. But, but I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later, after I try my best to become strong. Then I can't tell anyone. 
Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and I accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says even though you were a boy, I'll be okay, I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolves to take immediate action. And so, that day he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to restrain his mind and body, but sadly, that will be the first and only chance he will get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone for help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And he went to yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> it sure was. The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Shiro probably figured that even if he confined the mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was a very symbol of a strong man. That Shiro had always inspired to. Maybe talking to Mundo about it will help me get some courage. So he went and asked Mundo to help him become strong. <clears throat> that was his inspiration, and he thought that only with Mundo's support will he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then. It must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he made to Shihiro. Hmm? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Shihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... Wasn't that to cover up what is done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he made to Shihiro. But... But how does moving the body keep a secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in a boy's room locker, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boy's locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So he tricked to protect Shiro's secret by putting him in the girl's locker room and stealing his handbook, right? See, Mono did all that to keep the promise it made to Shiro. They are also true. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you? Because no matter what, I knew it. So that's what it triggered in after all. The possibility of anything, your embarrassing memory and the secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Nothing. He didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant to kill him. You're wrong! It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To, to judge others by your own standards is a of of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, it ob obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we are on the, uh, on the subject, why don't I tell you that embarrassing moment, that secret he didn't want anyone to know? Hey, um. You know that what Mono did? He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join the gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. 
Mundo's older brother's name was Daya Wat Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his own family. Growing up, he was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry eyed key brother. Meanwhile, the cherished Matic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang, and before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Dyad, older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two is younger brother Mono. In the beginning, everything was speeches and gravy, but when Mono started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation began to gnaw on Mono's very soul. It's gonna take over Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mono's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that we'll do is make the gang look bad. <laughs> Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... Got to get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once, just one time. No matter what, I gotta don't win. Fuck with me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on the top. On the night of his main retirement ceremony. Challenging to But doing this the streak is to raise tragedy struck. The kid brother. Was abandoned, victory and dashed in, in coming, but suddenly <laughs> laying in his kid brother's arm, the older brother delivered his final words. My, my kid, I, I fucked up, sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya's never blamed him for what's happened. Hey kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's team you and me put together. A promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise of his brother, never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of two kids who bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose off, uh, to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mono's lie became the truth. He wanted to leave the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. And yet, as soon, as soon as our killing game began, he realized no matter how tough he pretended to be, it was just another weakling that could die in an instance. <laughs> and then, suddenly, Monoclism announced the revealing of some secrets. At that point, it was clear I will have no problem shredding that on his secret. Mono killed his own older brother. No, no matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything will have been ruined. 
Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. Instead, all the guilt carrying around without would have been for nothing. Uh, so that's why. I die. Wonder. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fusy and inus and just started around. I had never felt anything like it before. I... I just... Don't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say. But after a while, that fusy <laughs> turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety way down into my stomach. And it was right around them that Shihiro asked me to start working out with them. And right there, I... He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus! Uh, I'm sorry. I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because I mean, you have kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out you would... But... You're right, but... I want to change. I write myself in lies. I'm weak, I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words are like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing me to lie I've been living myself. I have to change, I don't want to be weak anymore. You're strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell you. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should say it? What? You're saying... What? It? If I really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret. Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Shihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weaknesses. So, to, you know, it's, it's the kind of strength I never had. So I was jealous of him. My jealousy broke me. What? In what? Front of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking? With me right now? No! I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> what did you want me to do? What was I supposed to do? What I. Was I supposed to just sit back? And ruin everything. What's wrong? Damn you! Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub me my feeling in my, my, I, my face? I just wanted to admire you. Admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. I am strong. strong. I'm strong. <laughs> stronger than you. You son of a bitch! I'm stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet covered in blood. I had a dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him down on the ground. I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mundo, he was normally so graphic and aggressive, so angry. In that, he hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that, leaving a heart like this, and it turned him so cold-blooded. God damn it! Look at him, you see, you were all just like him, for a secret from the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you know hope? Anyone in there? Because I sure don't. You bastard. You shut up. And son of a bitch, go, go ahead, say that I, again, I dare you. Yep. 
Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but unfortunately, I can't do that right now because the time for punishment is fast approaching. Punishment? Well now, well now, well now, well now. That's what I promised you, right? The black gun that disturbs peace to be punished. Ridiculous. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. Laugh, laugh at death, and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be, my brother. Another murder and another ex execution. I want to feel it. Everyone's leaves are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Just let it happen. <laughs> Taka said screams invading our skulls, we were each forced to realize us again, but he, of course he had to. <laughs> what a disappointment, this is the end of the game? Byakuya? What is this? You are completely insane, you know that? Again? One of our friends is dead, do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this is a game of life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response as sec that. However, I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mundus Prime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because I'd made things more interesting. The voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night when the murder took place, I was in the library as well. Honestly. So you ignore the night time rule too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. Call agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. But I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted Mundo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he's gone, he looked inside and he saw the corpse. <laughs> You mean you actually witnessed the corpse? Okay. Aiden, slightest, slightest, slightest idea that I've well, saying you knew the culprit was from the very beginning. That's right. If that had been the end of it, that 
I mean, what time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would leave a new thing that would add to things up. I see. So after hearing about genocide check from Toko, I decided to use the weird fake nursing. But... But that man... If we hadn't figured out who really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously I could... I won't have revealed the truth before it reached that point. <laughs> of course, the acorn turned and looked at me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes <laughs> piercing into me. Thanks to a certain remark m m remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting <laughs> experiment. Interesting. Once I do decide to become black and I know I now know who I have to watch out for. Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we are done. Listen to your story. Moving hey. on. There's something I'd like to ask Manakuma. What's this? Uh oh, uh, I'm at next. You, you look uh, you like to perform these elaborate executions each, each time, correct? My, qu my question is why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment is, is despair. It's not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over exaggerating. <laughs> I'm not over exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform our love to despair. Damn. What do you mean? 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 Mean, 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 mean? Good grief. <laughs> I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as a feature, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, how exciting! Noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I think this is the first. This is the time. The, the start of terrifying friendship. That's Shut up! I will never stoop to the level of a shallow criminal like you. Let me just say this: after I have shipped completely the victory, you are up next. <laughs> I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. Which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! So, it's like you were the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for one for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I'll clean. <laughs> temper, temper. Sounds like someone needs to tap. <laughs> Nakuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom and the curtain closed on the case of Shihiro on a Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game will still continue because the mastermind won't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell and more of fortune than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship. It felt like it mounted nothing at all. It was worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. 
there's one thing I like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The Stiglitz High School student, I mean. Ooh, ooh. My, my! You really took me by surprise there! I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> Okay guys, we are going to end this episode in here. I hope you are enjoying this series as much as I am. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Peace out.